Welcome back to Casual Buyers Rugby. This is the official match preview for New Zealand taking on South Africa at Twickenham. And my oh my, am I excited for this game? I mean, it's pretty much a full strength New Zealand team versus a full strength South African forward squad and a rotated backline team. So, I mean, it's a bit weird to think about it, but it's prep for the World Cup. I said it in the in the previous match where uh, in the previous video where I went through the squads that I'm not too bothered about the result to be honest uh, out of a, from a South African point of view I don't expect us to really uh, never mind bash New Zealand I don't expect us really to win I think it will be a close game I think I think you could throw on any New Zealand team any South African team and it would be a pretty tight game uh, highly competitive game so, I mean, without f any further ado, in this video, we're going through some of the history between the two teams, uh, looking at, at the match breakdown, going through the two squads quickly, where the matchups will be vital, uh, where both teams could get their advantages in the match. And of course, since I am a gambling man, uh, we'll be looking at some of the betting odds. Without any further ado, goodness, that sounded horrible. Let's get into it. One, one. Starting off with the history of the two teams, and I mean, in the last five games, the last four games, it's been a 2-2 split. Last five games, New Zealand has edged it 3-2. I mean, five games ago, 2021 September, in Australia, New Zealand just pipped it 19-17. The game afterwards, in October, 31-29 for South Africa, then a 26-10 victory. Uh, for South Africa in South Africa and then of course the latest two games 35 to 23 at Ellis Park in South Africa New Zealand pipped it and then of course the previous time we met 35 20 to New Zealand uh, of course New Zealand really just dismantled us in those first first 20 minutes it was a very hard watch of course we came back into it a bit but I mean could you really say you got back into it uh, when you can just say New Zealand just almost just laid it down. They laid the law down in the first 20 minutes and then just cruised their way to, to, to the victory at the end. So, I mean, I'm not expecting too much from us in this game against New Zealand, but I still, still think we'll be competitive. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually pulled off a victory. Uh, we're going into this game with a lot of confidence, but so is New Zealand, to be fair. Uh, my highest prayer is just that both teams come out of this without any any injuries because I said it in my TikTok videos I've been bantering the northern hemisphere all the way through I've said listen the cup is staying in the south and if South Africa doesn't win it New Zealand or Australia better win it I've got it I've I've had enough of this hype around the northern hemisphere so I, I back our boys and when I say our boys I mean the three southern hemisphere teams you can throw in Argentina there as well but I mean you'll be delusional if you think they can pull it off pull it pull it Pull it off. Oh my goodness. Terrific. It's a nightmare. Anyway, moving on to the match breakdown. And I mean, obviously, uh, you don't have a match against South Africa without talking about the forwards, forwards back. And now it's going to be a highly physical game. So I think Ethan the Groot, Dane Coles and Tyrell Lomax has another big game ahead of them. Uh, obviously, they stood their ground in the first matchup. Uh, when you look at the 35 to 20 point victory for for New Zealand last time around in Auckland, uh, but they got to push push themselves again. So they've got a big game. Of course, you got Sam Whitelock and Scott Barrett. Uh, I mean, just to think about those two and to think that's not the first choice lock bearing is scary. Now I think we've got some some squad depth when you look at the when you look at the locks, when you look at Eben Etzebet, Erges Sneijman, uh well Lore Jager isn't going to the World Cup, but when he was there, uh John Klein, Franco Moster, and even Peter Steff that can slide in there. That's elite squad depth. But I mean New Zealand has three world class locks. And I mean you're talking about probably three of the top four world class locks in the world which is ridiculous to say. So, in that tight five, I mean, it's very... <laughs> Franco Mozart is there to do a job, okay? He's a workhorse, and he's there to, t to tire those bodies, okay? Overall, the first five, I mean, I'd prefer the South African props and hooker, 
and then I'd prefer the New Zealand locks for for this game. But I mean that those guys are the guys. Well, I think this game is going to be won or lost, and of course the back line. Uh, but I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, moving on, you've got the Lucys, you've got Siakulisi, Peter Steff, Dwayne Vermeulen going up against uh, Luke Jacobson, Sa- Luke Jacobson, Sam Kane, and Ari Savia. Uh, I didn't know too much about Luke Jacobson. People have told me the guy's physical. He's even more physical than Ari Savia, which just sounds like <sighs> scary. I, I, there's no other words. It's just like a nightmare to think, how could you be more physical than Ari Savia? Like... If you see Aris Avia running down on you, you shit bricks. Like, <sighs> is he better than Shannon Frizzell though? Because Shannon Frizzell is an absolute monster. Like, the guy is ruthless. So he's got some big boots to fill. And of course, like, if something goes wrong with Luke Jacobson, he has like a shock of a performance or he's just, he gets injured or whatever. You just bring on this average guy called Dalton Papali, who I rate very highly. I mean, that's squad depth for you. So you got Shannon Frizzell, first choice, injured. You bring in your second choice, and your third choice is Dalton Papali. I mean, what? <sighs> Just sounds like a dream if you're New Zealander, to be honest. But I mean, uh, yeah, even though those are three world-class guys for New Zealand, uh, going up against Sia Kulisi, Peter Steff, and Dwayne Vermeulen, three of South Africa's informed players, especially Sia Kulisi, uh, he's got... He, wa- he wants to play, okay? And we want to see him play. He put in an absolutely world-class performance against Wales. Now, you could say it was against Wales C team, but you still have to actually do something when you have the ball in your hand, okay? And that's exactly what Sia Kulisi did. For that 40 minutes, I mean, there's not a lot of times you could say a guy just plays 40 minutes and he gets man of the match, okay? Now, Sia didn't get man of the match, but he could have got man of the match. And then Peter Steff Toy has been an absolute workhorse getting back to that 2019 performances, uh, which is very exciting to see. Uh, to think that a guy has turned it around fr- from having his position being in doubt to being like first choice. There's no other one. Peter Steff has got that seven jersey. And then, of course, you got the experience with uh, Dwayne Vermeulen. Now, moving on to the back line. And I mean, the South Africans, we have an exciting back line. Okay? It's very exciting. But you know what kills that excitement? The combination of Faf and Marnie. I've said it a million times. I love Faf and I love Marnie. I hate them together. It feels like they've got no chemistry. They just don't fit in the system together. I don't know why they are persisting with this shit. Like it's it's actually starting to getting starting to get annoying. I compare that chemistry to Aaron Smith and Richie Moanga. I mean it's it's like an unfair comparison. It's literally, you can't, you can't compare the two. Like, you've got world, col- world class chemistry between the best nine in the world, best 10 in the world, going up against Faf, who used to be the best nine in the world, and Manu who's just come in, but both of them class players, but don't know shit from each other. I mean, the less I say about it, the better. Moving on, you've got Andre Estrays and Kanan Moody going up against uh, Jordi Barrett, Rico Yani, and this. This whole backline thing, I know I'm skipping this a bit, but I mean, the whole backline thing, that's where I think the game is going to be won and lost uh, if you're New Zealand, if you if you are the All Blacks. You have to use that backline, in my opinion. You have to get this ball free because you don't want to match up physically against the South Africans. Not that you can't, but you don't want to do this right in front of a World Cup. Get that ball out wide. Attack the chemistry between Andre Estrazen and, and Kevin Moody. It's never played together. It's the first time Andre Estrays is playing against New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. Really, really try and, uh, how do you say it, like ex- exploit the, the lack of chemistry between the two. That's what I would do. Throw it out wide, attack that back line in defense, see if the, ba- the back line of the box are organized. And the same with, um, with, with South Africa. I was, I, I'm just thinking, don't even match New Zealand physically because our guys are fragile at the moment. Throw that ball out wide. And try and unlock the New Zealand defense by them not knowing anything about you. Because there's literally no combinations that we got here. Our, our best combination that we have in the back line is the Marnie LeBorg and Damien Willemser combination. Okay? So, you got that combination and then the rest is just like, we'll see what happens. 
Because I don't even know how much these guys strain together if you look at the back line. Of course, you've got Papimbi, the finisher, and Kurtley Arons, who's been in magnificent form. And most teams would say that they'll take Mapimpi in their team. They'll take Kurtley Arons in their team. Unless you're New Zealand who says, listen, we're going to play Mark De Lea and Will Jordan. We'll, le- we'll just leave Lester Fainga Anuku. We'll just leave Caleb Clark. We'll just leave Narawa um, at home. Which is... <laughs> It's almost scary to say. Of course, we got Cheslin Colby as well and Kanan Moody who slots in on the wing. But this... Th- a big cri- criticism for a long time was New Zealand doesn't have all the depth in the world necessarily. Or they had depth, but it was like a lot in the same positions. New Zealand has depth all over. Even if Bowden gets injured, Jordy can play on fullback. Will Jordan can play on fullback. Damien McKenzie can play on fullback. Don't even get me started on the tens. I would die to take any one of those tens, and yet New Zealand has three of them. It's it's ridiculous to say. Of course, on the bench, New Zealand went with the rotated team on the bench. Well, in my opinion, it's more of a rotated team. Uh, some of the youngsters: Samsoni Takiao, the Mighty Williams, Fletcher Neal, uh, Josh Law, Tupuvai, Dalton Papali, and then of course Cam Roygaard, who is very exciting. Anton Leonard Brown going up against the South African back lo- uh, reserves with the world of experience. Bongi Manambi, Oxen Che, Trevor Niakane, John Klein, Ergis Neiman, Marco van Starum, Kubis Reinach, and Willi Leroux. Now, 100 times out of 100, I'd pick the South African bench above the New Zealand bench. But the difference for me personally in the starting lineup is big. Of course, you never know with South Africa, you never know with New Zealand. I mean, it's got to be a tight game, but I wouldn't even be surprised if any one of, any one of the two teams won. Like, it's, it's so hard to decide. That's why I think the betting odds have been absolutely crazy. So moving on to the odds, I mean, New Zealand 1.4 favourites. If you bet on South Africa to win this game, which is not a high probability, but you could get away with it, you get a 3.1 time your money back. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's easy 100 bucks, at least, on South Africa to pull it off. I mean, you could throw on the under-overs. I don't really care about it. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game if you want to throw on, like, an over 42.5. But, I mean, even on the... Let's look at the odds for the under-overs and the result. If you say New Zealand and over 48.5, which I think it will be... Get a 2.5 times money back. That feels pretty good. South African over 48.5, 6.2 times. Ridiculous. That's crazy. I'll be jumping on that. Easily. Yeah. Why can't I find the handicaps? Am I stupid at the moment? Okay, well, anyway. Seems like we'll have to end the video here without looking at the handicaps. Oh, got it. Never mind. Okay, South Africa with a plus 10.5, which I think will be fine. 1.5 times your money back. Easy. That's that's the one that I'll be going with. Uh, just saw it. I wouldn't throw on a minus handicap on New Zealand because I don't think it will be a smashing victory. I would definitely not throw a minus handicap on South Africa. Uh, yeah, 10.5 for South Africa as your safety bet. And then I'll throw in a couple of bets on South Africa for if the upset comes in. To be fair. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.